If this card is normal or special summoned, you can target one face-up monster your opponent controls, change it to face-down defense position. But wait, there's even more. If this card is in your graveyard, you can banish seven other cards from your hand, field, and or graveyard. Special summon this card. But wait, there's even more. But you'll have to wait till later. We have to go back in time. It is August 2016. And the second to last set of the year is about to be released in the TCG, The Dark Illusion. As this set would release the meta-defining Pot of Desires and release Legacy Support to Dark Magician, most of the set to, to most people was somewhat underwhelming, as it didn't really have any meta impact. However, lurking in the shadows, some of the best cards are found in the common to rare slot, and one of them was about to take over the meta by storm. Although initially unknown, Fairy Tale Snow was a card that would live on in infamy, and its impacts are still felt today in the TCG. As looks can be deceiving, Fairy Tale Snow, although looks like a very less dangerous card, this card is actually extremely devastating. However, at the start of its life in the game, Fairy Tale Snow didn't really do much on its own, as it had to be a part of certain engine decks that would utilize its ability to summon itself to its full potential. Decks like Light Sworn and when Raging Tempest finally released, the That Grass Looks Greener was able to abuse the fact that you could put lots of cards in the graveyard and use Fairy Tail Snow as a monster that could revive itself. However, as I alluded to earlier, there was something about Fairy Tail Snow that made it so potent that it would eventually find its way onto the ban list, and it was something I kept hidden for a good reason. This simple text box alone was able to turn Fairy Tail Snow into a monster, and that was the inclusion of during either player's turn. With Fairy Tail Snow being a quick effect, it was only a matter of time before Fairy Tail Snow would eventually get out of hand. If we look at its full stat box, we can see that with the inclusion of that is a quick effect Book of Moon, it's an OTK enabler as well as a chump block to survive being attacked, and one of the most shocking things that this has it is not a once per chain. Yes, Fairy Tail Snow is one of the very few cards with such a broken effect that was not once per chain. Now, for those wondering what this means, or if you already know, basically, Fairy Tail Snow is one of the few cards that can dodge interactions at the same time. So, what I mean by this is, if you use Fairy Tail Snow's effect in the graveyard, and someone were to throw up something like a Called by the Grave or a DD Crow, you can once again activate that Fairy Tail Snow in the same chain, banishing seven more cards. And then again, it would summon itself. Fairy Tail Snow became an infinite material, as it was able to come back multiple times over, whether it was detached as a material from an Xyz monster, synchro summoned as the non tuner material. The point was, Fairy Tail Snow was an almost infinite monster, as it was able to come back as long as there were seven cards to banish. And this made the cards just so strong being able to dodge stuff as well as becoming out and causing so much disruption. It was a card that by itself, and literally by itself, was a problem to your opponent. However, something else that Fairy Tail Snow did would not be exploited until a couple years down the road, and it would be this that would actually cause its demise. As we would see the release of newer archetypes that focused around the banishing mechanic, Fairy Tail Snow was actually designed at a time that it was not necessarily problematic, and that was the banishing cost. As we know, Pot of Desires was a card that was released in the same set that would banish the top 10 cards of your deck. One thing that was different with Fairy Tail Snow is that Pot of Desires had the face down clause, as cards that were banished face down could not be identified in a match, so they did not proc their effects if they were banished if they had one. However, with Fairy Tail Snow, it just banished cards, which means that cards could be banished face up, meaning that cards that did need to be banished could trigger their effects, and this alone became problematic, as we would see a deck that fully utilized this in the form of Thunder Dragons. Now, Thunder Dragons as a whole did abuse Fairy Tail Snow, but they did not abuse it to the sense that it made the card ban worthy. 
And we would even see the release of Thunder Dragons actually being surprised as they would lose the first major tournament that they were placed in, losing to a surprise upset to Prank Kids. But that's for another time. The point of it was, Fairy Tail of Snow now had a problematic mechanic that it was a part of, as it could actually trigger cards that, if they were banished, would have effects. And if we would see later, as we could see later on, other cards and archetypes were going to be focused around that simple strategy. And unfortunately, on January 2019, that ban list, Fairy Tail of Snow would finally be banned, as it was one card that amazingly went from 3 to 0. And banned, it will remain. Now, this is Brad from the Ad Army signing off. And for all of you out there to sign. On February 2022, something surprising would happen. As this ban list would do something that would shock most people. As believe it or not, Fairy Tail Snow would be released from its stint on the ban list. And it would return. However, it would not return to full power, as it would only return to the limited status. But, this alone was dangerous. As the game had progressed, we had also found that many decks were able to still use Fairy Tail Snow. And without a doubt, the moment it came off the list, people were ecstatic. People had been pushing for Fairy Tail Snow to come back. However, some people were scared, as when you look at Fairy Tail Snow, it still had everything that made it great from 2019. And even at one copy, one copy was more than enough to cause problems. But for a while, Fairy Tail Snow simply was a card that was playable, and for the most part, it was a healthy card, as although it was problematic to get hit with a Fairy Tail Snow, it didn't see too much play in most decks, as only a few decks were actually able to use it at full power. And one of those decks was branded, however, this did not mean the Fairy Tail Snow was an oppressive card as even most branded lists wouldn't really run this card, as although it was an additional one, you really didn't need to use it because there were other cards in the archetype that were better. But, once again, as people say, sometimes too much of a good thing is a bad thing. And, unfortunately for Fairy Tail Snow, we are about to get something so good that it would change everything. As we race to August 2022, as we would see the release of Power of the Elements, and if you have been living under a rock, this is a surprise to you, but Power of the Elements flipped things on its head again. As we would see the release of meta powerful archetypes, and one of them that would define the meta for the year would be tier elements. Now, tier elements by themselves immediately would terrify people, as it was released in the o and the TCG was foreshadowed by its dominance in the OCG. As the deck began to overtake its its prime candidate in the set, Sprite, as the other best deck of the format, and would be the best deck going forward for the arguably the next year. And unfortunately for Fairy Tail Snow, it could not exist with this milling archetype, as one of the bigger problems that Fairy Tail Snow suffered was that it would not be not used in this deck. And what I mean is that it would be perfect. A milling archetype that fusion summons and mills cards. This basically says Fairy Tail Snow, you're going to be put in here just to be a disruption, and you're going to become a problem. As one of the benefits that Fairy Tail Snow did in this deck that it didn't do in most was that it could use almost every mechanic. As if you ran tuners, you could synchro summon with the Fairy Tail Snow. The Fairy Tail Snow was able to be used as a seize material. As one of the most powerful cards of this um, metagame was going to be the Rank 4 Abyss Dweller. The whole point was Fairy Tail Snow was amazing. And I even fell, fell victim to this at locals when people would snow me. And in tier, it was felt free. You could get through a whole board, but you couldn't get through snow. And unfortunately, with the short, soon arrival of Magnificent Mavens in November, something had to be done. As once the Shizu cards came released, tier elements would take a form that would be almost unbeatable. And Fairy Tail Snow would just be the cherry on top. So, on the October 2022 ban list, unfortunately... For Fairy Tail Snow, it was back to the jail. As Fairy Tail Snow was banned on October 3rd, 2022, where it remains today. Now, it is arguable that Fairy Tail Snow could come back in the future. However, I do fear that in the situation that we had now, that Fairy Tail Snow is a card that will permanently be abused. If there were a time for it to return, maybe an errata would be needed. But that is a talk for another time. 
and unfortunately for fairy tale snow, its death was by its own design. This is Brad from the Ad Army signing off, and for all of you out there to sign on.